Long beleaguered by a series of strikes and a cost of living crisis, the United Kingdom unveiled its spring budget today for 2023. Treasury Chief Jeremy Hunt said his focus was reviving a stagnating economy and boosting investment while ruling out fears of a recession. Take a look. In November, they expected that the UK economy would enter recession in 2022 and contract by 1.4% in 2023. That left many families feeling concerned about the future. But today, the OBR forecast we will not enter a recession at all this year, with a contraction of just 0.2%. And after this year, the UK economy will grow in every single year of the forecast period by 1.8% in 2024, 2.5%, 2.1%, .1 and 1.9% in 2027. In a key measure, tax on corporate profits rises to 25% from the present 19%. UK Treasury Chief unveiled plans to increase the defence budget by £11 billion over the next five years amid the war in Ukraine. Today, following represent representations from our persuasive Defence Secretary, <laughs> I confirm that we will add a total of £11 billion to our defence budget over the next five years, and it will be nearly 2.25% of GDP by 2025. We were, the first European, we were the first large European country to commit to 2% of GDP for defence, and we will now raise that to 2.5% as soon as fiscal and economic circumstances allow. But even as Hunt delivered his remarks to the Parliament, many people across the country are seething about the high cost of living crisis that is eroding the spending power of people. As Jeremy Hunt delivered his first budget to Parliament, Doctors, teachers, journalists, civil servants and transport workers staged a walkout over pay, jobs, pensions and working conditions. For more on the latest from United Kingdom, our correspondent Alex Isaac is joining us live from London. Welcome to the broadcast. Alex, it was a big day for Jeremy Hunt. He has delivered the spring budget. Opposition leader Keir Starmer has called it, and I'm quoting here, a budget for growth that downgrades the growth forecast. I want to ask you, how is the public reacting to tax-free pension and drop in household spending? Well, some of the public are ecstatic that they're able to potentially get this free childcare and obviously uh, those who are trying to save for their pensions are also happy um, with what the news came out today. But there are a lot of other uh, people who are very frustrated that they don't seem to be getting many of the benefits of any tax cuts, especially those in household incomes over £50,000 per year. Now, they aren't getting any real benefits and in fact, in some places, they could actually be be getting uh, less money than um, they had previously because of those rates of income uh, tax which aren't moving and they're freezing at that point. So there are a lot of people who are still extremely frustrated and they don't see that any change is going to happen for them in the short term or in fact in the long term until the next election uh, whether or not they're going to be able to survive this cost of living crisis that is coming upon them especially those who are self-employed and as I said who are over that 50,000 tax bracket. But there are also a lot of uh, conversations with regards to who is this benefiting because there are lots of talk about the pension scheme and like, trying to get over 50s back into work and more people back into work. But ultimately, if people have left uh, their jobs because they had difficulties during COVID or they didn't want to even try and work any harder, are they likely to be coming back in their 50s to try and get that extra small, realistically small percentage of money uh, going forward just to top up their pension pots. I don't think that a lot of people are really thinking that far uh, ahead of the future if they're already hitting their 50 plus. So it's a, a, a lot of uh, people within the UK are slightly bemused by what's been said today and those that want to see the uh, politicians give money to the public sectors that are constantly striking as you mentioned there you know, teachers we've got uh, tubes we've got tomorrow we've got some train strikes all of those that continue striking because they're wanting money to be in line right. with inflation the government hasn't really discussed that at all in this particular budget going forward absolutely alex the chancellor says that the uk economy will not enter a technical recession this year, something that was previously anticipated. 
But a fall in inflation does not necessarily mean a fall in prices, does it? No, absolutely. And of course, we don't see that inflation coming anytime soon, fall coming anytime soon. He did also mention that it's likely to be 2% by the end of 2023. Now, that's still quite a, a while to go. And at the moment, we're still hitting those double figures. So whether or not inflation is going to come down, it won't be affecting the, the cost of food. It won't be affecting the uh, cost of fuel. And that's the real issues that are facing your everyday person here. And that's what they wanted to see. But it looks like whatever changes are going to be happening from this budget today it isn't going to be happening in a short term and people are wanting things to happen quickly and it doesn't look like that anything being put into place is going to be effective anytime soon sadly for those people who just want to you know survive and thrive all right thank you for all those insights that was alex Isaac joining us live from london